What's up guys, how you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Uh, today we're gonna be looking at some really good ideas uh, to help out with the COVID-19 uh, epidemic that is going on, or, or pandemic that is going on right now in our communities and in our countries and really all around the world. Uh, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, uh, stay tuned because we're gonna check out some cool ideas on helping out with the pandemic coming up here. All right, guys, so what I found for you guys is this Spencer Zug. There was a dentist and a doctor that came together uh, because there was this COVID-19 mass shortage and uh, basically different responders and people are uh, struggling to get doctor's masks and things like that um, because there's such a shortage because people are thinking that they need to buy these by like the droves and hoard them. Well, we're actually having a problem with uh, actual uh, medical people needing these uh, masks and things for uh, exposure. So that way they don't get exposed to this disease. So guys, this is the awesomest thing I saw and it's in our community. This doctor and this uh, dentist got together and they have designed a 3D printable reusable mask. Basically, uh, we you 3D print out the mask essentially, and then you've got this kind of in, interchangeable wafer that's inside. You 3D print this as well, and you can use any filter material that uh, will filter down to the filtration recommended by the CDC. Um, but you can basically take a doctor's mask that's you know the normal loop mask. Um, and you can actually, instead of them using it once and then having to throw it away, you can actually, with this insert, since it's only about, I don't know, maybe two inches by two inches, something like that, you can actually cut out or basically take that doctor's mask and cut it up into pieces. And one mask can now become like six masks or, or, or five or, or so. Uh, instead of one mask being used once, it can be used like six times because you cut out little pieces, put it into this guy, and then it'll work. And I'll show you how it works. It's actually pretty darn cool. But I wanted to show you this. The link is down in the description to download. They posted this for everyone to see. There is the link to the STL files. It is very simple to print. Let me uh, show you what I'm talking about. Let me bring my repetier over. I'm using my one owl, uh, uh for the small little insert because it can print it pretty fast. Um, but for the big piece, I need something that moves quickly so I've got my Delta printer uh, that is the big TiVo uh, little monster is what I'm going to be using for my printer. Pretty much any printer can use it. It can print without support. Um, like, like I show here, here's the mask and it's built to print face down. No support needed whatsoever. I didn't print mine with support. And uh, basically with my settings, I'm using my, uh, I'm using the Cura engine for me, I'm, you can print it out a PLA. PLA works just fine. Um, here's basically my speeds and my settings. Here's my filament settings. If any of you want to write that down, um, close that. Basically, um, I'm doing a brim adhesion. Uh, I'm doing 0.2 millimeter quality, so that way it'll print fast. Um, I'm printing the fastest setting, so I'm doing 60 millimeters per second. I do crank that up once it gets a good uh, base down, once it gets a good, I don't know, maybe... Uh, I don't know, part way up to where it starts forming this section of the mask. I then speed it up. I go to 150% on the printer. So it gives me a little boost in speed and I can get it done pretty much in about three hours. So I'm going to go ahead and slice it so you can see it sliced live and, uh, you'll see what the time estimate is and it, it's pretty accurate. It's about three hours. And that's what the doctors and uh, them re uh, say is with standard uh, equipment, you can get it in about three hours. Now my one owl, it was going to take about double the time. It's going to take about six hours. Yeah. Three hours and 41 minutes. Like I said, it takes about three hours. Once you speed it up, uh, if I speed up the, the print, it doesn't really degrade the quality very much, but I go ahead and speed that up and do that. Now the little insert, the little piece, my one owl, just a regular Cartesian printer can print that in about 40 minutes. So it's pretty, it's pretty fast to print that. So I have, since I've got two printers, I can crank, crank these out a little faster. Um, I, I tried putting two because the, the little monster is big enough to print two at a shot. And honestly, you, you really don't gain much. You really don't gain much and you get a lot of stringing. So in any case, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get one of these printed out and I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like. All right. And show you how to uh, put it together. 
Okay, so the thought process behind this is you've got this little thing. This is going to be the deal for your filter. You got your doctor's mask here, okay? So we're going to reuse these little ear loops uh, for the sides, and then we're going to cut some fabric out of here. So I've got a exacto knife here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just, well, in fact, I'll probably just tear it. Yeah, you can just tear these off. At least that's the thought, okay? And then I believe you can uh, thread these through here. Okay, so I got the ear loops on it. So those are uh, pretty, pretty spongy. We'll see how they work, but in any case. So now we're gonna take this, and this is the beauty of this uh, mask, even though you have you got these pleats here, um, is that you can cut out quite a bit of material. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take these side edges off, take those off, so that way we can expand the pleats, which is exactly what we're wanting. So now, We've got a lot of material here that can be used as filter material. So now, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to do this, probably folding it up on the sides. So now, the idea is to place this about like so. Let me cut. So now, there's our filter material. So we place that onto the grill. Now, they show it going in this way. I think it's gonna be a whole lot easier to put it in that way. So, this is, let's see. Yeah, the blue sticks out. This is the part you breathe through. So I'm gonna go this way with it. And we should be able to get it over here. I'm gonna go this way with it, with the blue being out. And we'll see if we can stick this in there in place. All right, seems to be good, nice and tight, seems to be good. So now we're gonna try wearing it and we'll see, we'll see how well it goes when we put it on. Okay guys, so we've got it completed, we've got it put together here, all right? So um, now, if you notice uh, on the link down below, um, I'll notice I'll, uh, there is uh, an instruction sheet. Um, you need to do some finishing to this. Uh, I've been reading a lot of different posts on Reddit and whatnot right now, and a lot of different uh, knowledge has been going out. I'll link to the Reddit post down below so that you will be informed, but I do want to say uh, a few words about it. Um, you do uh, need to finish this. Um, they talk about coating it in a lacquer, and it's not so much for comfort. It is for uh, because PLA is a porous material. Um, that's why that they don't want uh, you to put, you know, use it like as a bowl or something like that, or use it as glassware for food because food can uh, uh, actually get trapped in the pores of this plastic. It'll actually absorb it and cause bacterial growth. So, what do you think it'll do with a virus? So that's one reason why to coat this in an acrylic. Uh, uh, spray paint or something like that or a lacquer finish or whatever and number two is because on a D uh, or an FDM printer if you notice you can see the lines in that even if you were to print this in PETG or uh, HDPE or something like that, that is a plastic that does not absorb uh, uh, different materials that it comes in contact with, you still run the risk of getting microscopic little pieces of things in between the uh, layers, which uh, is basically the same thing as, you know, if you're around the virus, the virus could get trapped in the little layers. So you definitely, if this, these are going to be reusable, you definitely want to make sure that the only thing that could come in contact with the virus and be permeated with it is the filter. And so that's the part that you discard and put a new one in. The rest of the mask needs to be protected against that where you can just, you know, spray it down with sanitizer or something like that. And you make sure that all these little lines and stuff are filled in by using some sort of a lacquer. I would probably even go so far as say, I'd probably use like maybe like a high build primer in a can first and then lacquer seal it because the high build has stuff in it to fill in the cracks, okay? Um, so that's what I would probably say there needs to be a little bit of post-processing done to this. This one, uh, I've not done that to, but I would recommend that. And it is recommended in the link below in the instructions uh, to basically sand this down and uh, paint it. And that's what it's for, is to seal up the plastic and to also fill in those grooves to make sure that uh, you're not going to do it. Now, 
Looking at uh, the Reddit post, there's a lot of concern with these. They're saying that uh, these may be uh, dangerous, that you, you know, you, you could actually cause more virus because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't fully seal to your face or anything like that. Um, it's still just a mask, okay? It's not eliminating your uh, concern, you know? It's not eliminating uh, exposure to the virus, you know, I mean, your eyes are still exposed, right? Uh, your nose is still exposed. Well, this one, it covers your nose, but you know what I'm saying? Your ear canals are still exposed, right? I mean, and two, it doesn't, it doesn't seal. So neither does the doctor mask. Okay. The doctor mask is just kind of a sheet of paper. It reduces your susceptibility to contracting the virus. It does not eliminate it. It reduces it. So um, that's one thing that I want to kind of put to bed is that we're not designing a mask that is going to be the next best thing to a ventilator or to a, you know, a full hazmat suit. Okay. This is just like the doctor's mask. It's just to reason, but the doctor's masks are in high demand and it's a good way of making a reusable mask or basically taking one of those and stretching it out longer. Having said that, let's try it on. Disclaimers out of the way. Okay, so I've tied I've tied some little knots in it to kind of shorten it up because it was a little a little tight on me, or I mean a little loose. Sorry. But let's get this on. I probably made it a little too tight, but actually it's it works pretty good. Actually, it actually feels pretty good. Now you could play around with the scaling to make it uh, bigger or smaller depending on face structure. But I can actually feel, I can actually feel the air restriction. I can feel it going through when I breathe in. I can feel it suction to my face and I can feel the air go through. So, I mean, I think it does work and actually it may work a little bit better uh, than the actual uh, doctor's mask. You know, um, it may actually work better. But again, this is only something to reduce your susceptibility to catching the virus. It does not eliminate it. So I do want to make that clear. But to give it your best shot, to give your best chance for uh, not having bacteria grow in it, not having the virus permeate through the plastic, you do need to follow the instructions that are in the link that I, I shared below. To go to that dark place where you download the STL files, there's a PDF that tells you... Oh, I'm here. Let me take this off. There is a PDF that tells you um, how to finish this off. So any case, uh, that's basically the uh, the concerns around it, the coolness. But I think it's a cool idea. I think it's a really cool idea, uh, a way to give uh, people uh, a way of having a reusable uh, filter. And this could be any kind of filter, any filter that is is to the micron rating or whatever it should be that the CDC has out. Uh, any type of filter material will do. Uh, I just you know cut up that doctor's mask, but any filter type will do. Okay, so let's let's check this out. Let's let's see what we can do to help our communities, help different people. Um, but know that you do need to finish this off um, to give it the best chance possible uh, for it to work. And and you don't want to grow bacteria or something and give you know people some some other respiratory problem on top of COVID-19, right? So we do want to follow the instructions, um, link it down below. And also, if you want to help with uh, uh, this 3D printing stuff and whatnot, you can reach out to, I'll, I'll link an email down below as well, and you can reach out to a, uh, uh, a university group that is uh, working on these as well. So any case, take care, guys. We'll see you next time and be safe out there, okay? Thank <laughs> you.